Commanders are dead again. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right next to each other, no less. <laughs> right next to the dead Wraith Lord as the Tyranid swarms <laughs> on. But it just came too little too late. Well, what can you say? They died for their gods. <laughs> But, uh, I just noticed that, uh, like, every, like, red team had, like, nothing really on the field except for the TNA player, who uh, was pretty much, like, the bulk of their forces at, the po at that point. Oh, uh, you're right. You know, that was kind of yeah. interesting, because it certainly, he certainly used Tyranids the right way, to overwhelm your opponent. This is contrast to the Tyranid player in our first re uh, replay. Where he used ranged Tyranids against strength Marines. Yeah, it's like that's not where Tyranids are strong at. They are strong at melee combat. Uh, but when you look at the numbers, I mean, uh, oh, Geno Crisis, he had certainly had the numbers. But uh, so I would say the ones who suffered casualties the most were Stiltskin and Sham Clouder. They got the crap kicked out of them a lot. But uh, Blue Forces, yeah, they were able to hold the North long enough for victory. Uh, nice job on their part. They recognized that, hey, if we want to win this game, you know, after the getting the crap kicked out of them, they realized they had to rally around the North and capture that position and then hold it as long as possible. And then Thanatov, you had to give that guy props. He went down south, realized that, hey, if it's like we got to get some extra bleed, just like Rob was saying. And that's what he did. He seized the initiative, went down south, and he capped the point. And Red didn't do anything about it. Because they were so concentrated on capturing the north because they felt they were on the cusp of victory. They just kept, didn't even think about uh, trying to slow their, the, the, their bleed down on that uh, force in the south. Because I guess they thought it was inconsequential. But they just kept, you know, like washing on ro like water on rocks or rather against a wall they just kept hitting the blue uh, front line and it, they just kept getting stonewalled so so, so did blue come back from like a 11 points and red had like 200 points yeah, yeah. plus 300 I mean I think um I think blue team had yeah blue team had 11 I think red had about like uh, 180 or something when a blue team ta finally caught uh, or capped um, the south point and then from there it was just kinda complete destruction hmm. yummy I'm having Eesh. I just got uh, some dinner brought to me hmm. beef and I just happen to be looking at the uh, the remains of uh, <laughs> of the carnifex that died <coughs> Awesome. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, a little bit down my throat. <coughs> okay, so anyway. Nice job on Blue Team's part. What could have yeah, Red done? Sure. I think they could have pushed through middle more. You know, they just kept pushing where the enemy was strongest at, and that's not how you win. Well, you yeah, know, uh, we're trying to I flank that position, but we couldn't really <laughs> flank it very well. Yeah, I mean, red had they had they had south, but they didn't they didn't try to hold it at all. I mean, I guess there was that webway gate there, but like. It, I mean, and I guess, you know, they, they were putting all their efforts into pushing up north, and I think maybe if Blue Team had noticed earlier that everybody on Red Team was pushing everything north, they could have grabbed south earlier and kind of made it more... Oh, well, they could have probably just ended it quicker, because, I don't know, Red Team didn't seem to adjust that well. Hmm. Uh. <coughs> more adaption by Blue Team. Well, yeah, and, uh, you know, Red Team, I it just makes me wonder if Red Team kind of panicked at the end and they just kept throwing all their forces right in front of the blue lines, right straight into an ambush every time. 
I mean, you noticed by the Chaos Marines who had their guys in cloak and just were waiting. Yeah. It's like at first it seemed like they were cocky and then, you know, them panics in when they, you know, found out that they could lose the match. Yeah. They had such a huge lead, I'm sure, early on they thought, you know, we'll just fucking, you know, mass everybody up and plow through north and just take it all. But, I mean, when that didn't happen, I, I don't think they fit, they can really, they really had a way to adjust. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely work on adjustment next time. And also, when you know where the enemy is strongest at, it's usually a time to adjust your approach. And I think they probably could have made some more impact, you know, sp you know, going through uh, another direction. And then splitting their blues forces up, and then just sledgehammer them on the right hand side, and they probably could have won it. You know, trying to divert some forces away from the front line probably would have helped. Which is what I know they were trying to do using those webway gates, but if the enemy sees them, th it's not going to work. And I don't know if they really coordinated them that well. I mean, you saw them try that yeah. one flank that one time, and that didn't work because, well, first off, they didn't take advantage of it qu quickly enough. So, they got spotted, like, too late, before most of them could mass. If they had attacked in a mass, they probably could have gotten, done some real damage, but that didn't happen. So, I think, you know, looking at it from Blue's perspective, and since Red had control over much of center, they probably could have done a spearhead, gone straight up behind, you know, the Blue Lines, forcing them to fall back and try to protect the left VP, and if, you know, as long as one is just like one person from their team could have done that, then two guys from red team could have moved in and sandwiched blue on the on the, on the right flank, hitting that right hand VP. At least that's my idea. You know, to try and divert some blues forces and then they're now they're caught between red forces and blue forces at the same time. You know what I mean? Now they're caught in a sandwich. So now they're trying they have to move in to protect the left VP and have to move in to protect the right VP at the same time. Uh, at least that's my yeah it, it would have been good if they had just it, it, they had enough forces you know when they were having those giant pushes they had all amassed big forces for a big push but then they all just shoved them up the same exact area and like blue team figured that out pretty quickly and set up for it and i'm not sure they were as well guarded if if some if one of the red players as you were saying had had moved up the middle and come around the back cuz i mean they were they were set up to, to cover the right point, the the northern right point uh, VP, and there were they didn't have anybody directly on the left, and I think e, you're right that they got I guess discouraged to try and flank when the uh, webway gate that they had up was discovered. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, good games. To Stillskin, General Crisis, Chan Clatter, Tricky Gilgan, Techno 11, and Thanatov. Who would you say wins the color highlight of the day for this replay? <laughs> it's, I think it's kind of between Thanatov with his pink Chaos Marines versus Chan Clatter and his freaking uh, green chrome Space Marines. Yet again, we see that. <laughs> see, I have to give my nod to. Uh the pink chaos simply because I've seen green before and it's no longer <laughs> new and exciting to me. <laughs> I agree. Oh, pink is so in. <laughs> uh, just a point of note. Note there the human sacrifices all around. On a bright pink base. Just dis disemboweled corpses. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so horrible. He is so pretty. Uh, well, this has been uh, Pelfox with the OS team on uh, yet another vidcast. Good games to both parties involved. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Till next time.